Hi, this is the Avionics Intelligence Report, and I'm John McHale. Do you have an iPad, kind of like the one I've got here? Do you ever use it on an airplane, or to watch movies, do work, play games, etc.? Well, the airlines, airframe makers, and avionics integrators recognize its popularity and are making use of the iPad from the cockpit to the cabin. In the cockpit, pilots are using it as a Class 1 and sometimes Class 2 electronic flight bag, or EFB. In some applications, the pilot is strapping the iPad to his knee. They find it inexpensive and can use it as a document reader or for mobile charting via apps from Jeppesen. In some general aviation applications, pilots may even use it as an internet interface. Airlines are starting to use the device too. For example, Continental Airlines reportedly is considering using the iPad as a backup to a Class 2 EFB. Not all airlines are iPad fans though, as they already have PCs in the cockpit and see no advantage in implementing an iPad. One EFB maker for commercial and military applications told me that they don't see the Apple iPad as a threat, but as a nice backup to Class 3 EFBs. Jefferson engineers recently tested the iPad 2 for use in commercial aircraft cockpits and completed rapid decompression testing of the iPad 2 as part of that process. The test was completed to an altitude of 51,000 feet, proving the integrity of iPad 2 in the unlikely event of sudden cabin pressure loss. Jefferson tested the iPad last year to get initial FAA authorization for the Jefferson mobile TC charting app, but because of structural changes in the iPad 2, they had to run a new test. No anomalies were detected during either iPad test, though. Jefferson's mobile TC app is available from the App Store for iPad or at the iTunes App Store at no additional charge for Jefferson electronic navigation charting subscribers. Embracing technology such as the iPad makes sense. Tomorrow's pilots, such as Captains Patrick and Caroline at JetBlue to my right, are growing up using this tech, whether it's for video games or education. Now, of course, they're not real pilots, just guests of the crew. But hopefully this will inspire them someday to be pilots or avionics engineers. And when they get there, using the iPads and future as yet unthought of gadgets will be second nature to them. In the meantime, for those of us who sit in the cabin and not the cockpit, Avionics integrators are enabling iPad and mobile device users to have new interface options at their seat. Honeywell's Ovation Select cabin management system includes an interface for passengers to connect via their iPad, iPhone, Blackberry, or laptop, or while watching a Blu-ray movie. It also has the 3D high-definition moving map application, JetMap HD, which enables passengers to view their flight path from as many as 18 different perspectives with the zoom function. Rockwell Collins engineers announced a new iTunes App Store application that enables the Apple iPhone or an iPod Touch to function as a full two-way remote for the Rockwell Collins Venue man Cabin Management System. The free app, called Cabin Remote, one word, is available for both forward fit and aftermarket aircraft equipped with Venue. Use of Cabin Remote requires a wireless access point and a simple software update to Venue. Once on board the aircraft, the app automatically synchronizes with the Venue system enabling all of the specific functions of the aircraft. While iPads are making inroads in the cockpit and the cabin, I think it is unlikely you'll see it in military cockpits. iPads don't really come inherently rugged and are unlikely to handle the shock and vibe requirements for military aircraft, let alone a military drop test. For that matter, I doubt they'd survive a reporter's drop test from desk to floor. No, I haven't tried it. They're $700 for crying out loud, but they are fun. So much fun that our magazine, Military and Aerospace Electronics, has created an app for the iPad so readers can download the latest issue and read it on those long flights, like here on our IT manager's iPad. To buy the app, just go to bit.ly slash milero. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash M-I-L-A-E-R-O. Now that our magazine has an iPad, I think it makes sense for every editor on staff to have an iPad. Only goes to reason. What do you say, Mr. Publisher? I'm John McHale, and this is the Avionics Intelligence Report.